There are certain things about New York all New Yorkers must deal with. Lots of people, tight spaces. Even if you're Google, you have to make do. And for the web search giant whose New York headquarters take up an entire city block, that involves magical thinking. At the Water Tower Cafe, if there's a pesky bit of structurally necessary wall, you just paint on the completed view. If the building is old and elevators take forever to come, you install a ladder chute between floors, complete with a bag for your laptop so you don't drop it while monkeying up the ladder. And at the top of that chute, on the floor above, you install a cheeky nod to the transport of the common people of New York. After all, the wheels of preference here are scooters. With a boom in hiring over the last year, Google has gone from roughly 2,000 workers at its Chelsea office in New York to nearly 3,000, hiring particularly in the areas of media and advertising. Many of the new hires have had to often move from floor to floor as facilities adjusted to the influx and tried to provide symbiotic seating arrangements. One engineer responsible for Android voice functionality moved to New York from Google's Silicon Valley headquarters. Like all these remote offices that we have outside of California are um, really treated as their own kind of unique offices, right? So they have special perks and they have special design that sort of you know, relates them to their environment, things like that. So um, you know, coming into work here, you're not gonna mistake that you're, you might be in just some sort of other room in another building. You know, you know that you're at Google and you know that you're in New York at Google. And Google has taken that sentiment to heart. One conference room is set up like a tiny New York City apartment, with irony aplenty. There's Mr. T. China on the wall, and awkward family photos. Even a cat is included. Peppered into the authentic environment are of course schematics, but this is Google. Even the schematics can end up looking lifelike. The hallway slash street outside the conference room has a landscape painted on the wall, and the hallway floor even has subway grates and a fire hydrant. In other hallways, an homage to authentic New York City graffiti on the front of a private phone room. Private getaways are plentiful here. In fact, in Google's New York library, where Victorian depictions of Star Wars characters dot the walls, There are even secret trick door bookcases, giving way to private reflection rooms. Shelves are stacked with books on user interface, Macs, and coding. The best feature, though, is a wall of virtual books where Googlers can tap with their phone and download titles they want. For the Google staffers who are keen on the rough and tumble side of New York City, there's a wing dedicated to New York's meatpacking district, complete with genuine meat hooks and retractable storefront gates. All of the design is meant to encourage interaction between structurally separate teams. There's like this, di you know, this energy of diversity in New York, and that's also kind of seen in the office in that way, right? Is that there's, there's more interaction with people from outside your immediate area because we're all kind of in this tight space together, the same way that New York is, the, is, a, is a hub for that kind of thing. So we kind of joke that if you don't like your seat, don't worry, it'll change soon, right? So with every group expanding, you always have to look at, well, who's near to one another and how do those um, proximities and adjacencies work? The person responsible for all the wonky integration started the New York office with 17 people. She says she's incorporated the influx of new staffers with an eye towards what she calls casual collision, where Google staffers bump into people they don't normally work with. Whether it's an elevator lobby with a couch or whether it's a micro kitchen where you can get a cup of coffee or a snack, and bump into someone who you might not work with every day, but you have an opportunity to have a conversation that can inspire the next great idea. And it is New York. Why leave your dog cooped up in a tiny apartment? At Google New York, you can bring them to work. And for one staffer, living in New York as opposed to Silicon Valley means getting to live in a real-world product testing Petri dish. As, as somebody who develops products and thinks about product ideas, is it, it's, it gives you a very real and natural environment as compared to the Silicon Valley, which sometimes feels very tech-focused, to kind of be out in the world and really experience what it's like to work on, you know, or what it's like to use these products in, a, in, a, in the context outside of the Bay Area. At the end of the day, we all eat, even New York Googlers, and there's New York offerings in that regard, too. But here the food you eat is appropriately situated for maximum aesthetic effect. Hi, Mom. And opportunity. <laughs>